Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond. And if you missed our last video, we're getting started on our next pond build. And it's a 30,000 gallon aquascape style pond with a big waterfall, a beach area, some bass coves, and a wetland filtration system. And it's by far been one of the coolest projects I've ever worked on. But if you missed day one, we hauled in 100 tons of these aqua blue stones. And Ed the Pond Professor got it designed and laid out like he likes it. And we also collected some giant wood pieces here on the property to use in the pond and give it that natural look. We also got the liner laid out. And one of my favorite features, we built some bass coves and places for those fish to hide out. And we got some of those beautiful aqua blue stones set down in the bottom layer of the pond and got off to a great start. So now it's time to pick back up where we left off. And there's one thing that's guaranteed to happen every day of this pond build, and that's setting these big aqua blue stones. So I'll give you a quick run through of exactly how these guys are setting the stones. So some of these boulders can weigh over 2,000 pounds. So we use the skid steer to get the rocks and boulders up to the pond's edge, and then they strap it in and use the excavator to set it in the exact spot. And as I mentioned in the last video, this is tedious work because many of the boulders have awkward angles that require other smaller rocks to help get them set in the perfect position. But the guys have done a great job so far, and we've almost got the bottom layer of the pond, which is gonna be about four and a half feet deep, filled with the boulders, and we're starting to work our way out. So a quick look at where we left off. We built some coves and also set some wood pieces in place. Got a nice little rock wall right here with the intake bay back behind it. We got the big oak limb set in place, defining one of the edges of the pond. And over here on this side, we're putting another log in to set that edge, but we're gonna have a small dock that extends out over the deep portion of the pond. And we'll set two of the dock pilings right there in those buckets. And these guys are working on the piping that's gonna be connected to the recirculation pumps that keep fresh water flowing throughout the pond. So one of the goals this morning was to collect some more wood pieces. And I've got about 15 acres of swampy creek bottom here at the farm. And we found some perfect fallen cedar trees and oaks. And these hardwoods are perfect because they're durable and should last in the pond for years and years. But it's a good thing we got this machinery because most of them are not in ideal locations. But this morning was a success and we got another good looking piece. But take a look at this cedar tree. I love the look of this one and there's no telling how old it is. And it's even got a hollowed out bottom. I'm not sure if that portion will be underwater, but if so, I'm sure the smaller fish will turn it into a cave. So one of the goals for today was to get this big guy set and Ed had a perfect plan for it where the trunk of the tree is going to stick out into the small pool area where the waterfall crashes into the pond. And just like I mentioned in the last video, the aquascape crew are meticulous with the details and Ed has a vision of exactly how he'd like for this log to be placed. So once we got it set, we saw that a portion of the tree would be sticking too high out of the water. So we removed the liner and dug that area out. After a couple more attempts, we finally got it set to that perfect height. Lay it down. And we got another gravel delivery today. This is some of the smaller rock and we'll continue to get those deliveries because we have 100 tons of aqua blue stones, 45 tons of a different variety of smaller filler rock, and then nine tons of that decorative Tennessee River rock for a grand total of 154 tons of rock. All right, there's a good look at the big log set in its final spot. The guys also got started running the three inch pipe for the recirculation. And we even got some concrete poured and those dock pilings will be coming in next. And next up is one of the key features of this new pond build, the wetland filtration system. And this is new to me because in our backyard pond, we had a skimmer system instead of a wetland filter. And as you can see, the wetland filter is a separate body of water from the main pond and we'll pump water from the intake bay up to the wetland filter. And I'm gonna have Ed explain how that process works. What we're working on right now is the wetland filtration system. Um, this is gonna give us that desired water quality that we're looking for. It's a custom system so we could expand it or contract it according to the design parameters of the project. So what we're trying to do, I believe the number, I'd have to recheck my calculations, I believe we're at 12 to 15% of the surface area of the pond for the actual wetland filter. Um, that's really good for most applications, but it's kind of a, um, it's a, a, it's kind of an inverse proportion. So the larger the pond gets, the smaller the percentage of the wetland filter. That's because you have a lot of 
uh, stabilization happening in the water column with a large volume of water. We're looking at 30,000 gallons plus. The smaller the feature is, the higher the percentage of wetland filter. So it's a sliding scale that I'm always kind of playing around with. We're going down to a depth of four feet. We're gonna have two different water distribution pieces. We have our snorkel centipede system. We have a 93% reduction in water velocity as the water enters the wetland filter. That's gonna allow the fine sediments and stuff to drop out. That's very, very important because when we're stuck talking about biological filtration, we're working with nitrifying bacteria. Nitrifying bacteria, they don't like sediments. So if you clog them up, if the gravel bed or the filter media gets clogged and gunked up with inorganic sediments and things like that, those nitrifying bacteria are not going to function properly. So it will impact water quality. So we have multiple stages. The intake bay first, remove as much of that stuff before it actually enters the filter. Then we have a two-stage distribution inside. High velocity water comes in, then the water spreads itself out nice and evenly along those aqua blocks, and we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later as we move along. Then the water's gonna go through different grades of river stone. We have the two inch to five inch rock, has a higher void space. Then we have one inch rock on top of that. So what happens, we have all that water going down, spreads itself out nice and easily. That gives us a good contact time for, it's a hydraulic retention time is what we're looking for. So we want to have that water gently moving through the gravel filter bed, because as it does that, the water comes in contact with the gravel. The gravel is actually a home for these microorganisms. All we're trying to do is we're creating a giant condominium complex for different types of bacteria. They're gonna feed off of the nitrogen that is generated by the fish waste inside the ecosystem. This is gonna detoxify the water. It is an aerobic process, so that means we're taking highly oxygenated water, nutrient rich, it's gonna get distributed into the wetland filter. Then there's gonna be a, uh, we're gonna remove nutrients during that process, we're consuming oxygen. That's why we have the outfall is a waterfall. That will help to replenish the dissolved oxygen and then it's going to complete the cycle. Awesome. It's time for another game day recipe and today we're going to be cooking sausage stuffed mushrooms and elk tenderloin. And this video is brought to you by Kamikoto Knives. We've been using these knives since we started the pond build and I'm still extremely impressed with them. They're made out of high quality Japanese steel and they always have a very sharp edge. So let's start off with the mushroom recipe first. It's pretty simple. It takes mozzarella cheese, mushrooms, some breakfast sausage, parsley, olive oil, and cream cheese. So you wanna fully cook the sausage first and then start by taking the stems out of the mushroom. And I personally like to keep those stems and chop them up and add them to the recipe. So once we get those chopped up, we add eight ounces of cream cheese, the mushroom stems, one pound of sausage, and then a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. And then mix all that up really good and then add about one tablespoon of stuffing to each mushroom. And the last thing I'll do is top it with parsley. So you can either cook these in the oven or on the grill at about 350 degrees for 20 minutes. And then next up is elk rack. And since elk meat is so good, I like to keep it simple with salt and pepper and a little bit of southern flavor. Then throw it on the grill and sometimes cutting it in half will help it cook a little faster. But the one key to cooking elk is you don't want to overcook it. So medium to medium rare is usually perfect. But the Kamikoto knives come in several different sets, but our favorite favorite is probably the Kampeki. It seems to be perfect for our needs. It comes with a seven inch vegetable knife, a eight and a half inch slicing knife, and a five inch utility knife. But don't just take it from me. These knives are used by Michelin star chefs all across the world. And they also come in this nice wooden box, which makes it perfect for a gift. So if you're interested in checking them out, I'll put a link down in the video description that'll give you $50 off a knife set. And we just about got the wetland filter excavated. You can see that's our natural sandy soil that we have out here on the property. Good for growing crops, not so good at holding water for ponds. And we got another delivery of rocks and it's nine tons of the Tennessee River rock. These are more of the decorative rocks that'll be used up around the waterfall features and perimeter of the pond. So next up, we have a critical step in the pond build and that's seaming two pieces of the liner together. And so obviously when you have a pond built in the shape this one's built, you're not gonna have a single liner that can cover every portion of it. So we covered the main body of the pond with one big chunk of liner and the guys are gonna use this sealing tape to seal these last two pieces together. And that's really important because if there was a crease or a hole in between the two liners, then some of that water coming down the waterfall would leak out and get beneath the liner of the pond, and that could also cause some other problems. So the guys took their time, made sure to clean everything off, and use glue 
and slowly applied this tape, and I got full confidence we're not going to have any leaks. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the constants in this pond build is going to be delivering the aqua blues. So we've got at least two or three guys full time setting these rocks. <laughs> and here's a good example of how things don't always go as planned. You can see Ed and Greg setting another one of these big boulders. And after they get it over in place and inspect it, they see it's not the exact angle they need. So they decide since it's not a perfect fit, they're going to remove it and find a better one. So the stones are a tedious and time-consuming process, but will absolutely pay off in the end. So now the guys are working on installing the centipede piping system, and that helps distribute the water evenly throughout the wetland filter. And once they've got that dug out, they get the liner inserted, and then the piping set back in place and filled with gravel. And then a layer of aqua block set on top of that and evened out. And then lots and lots of gravel set on top of that, helping to filter that water. And again, this is one of those times where the machinery comes in handy. And there's a good overhead look. And in case I hadn't mentioned it, the waterfall is what connects the wetland filter to the main body of the pond. And we moved the cedar tree one last time to get the liner up under it. And now it's been set for the last time. And the guys are adding cement and getting some of those piling set. And this is going to be a really small dock. I didn't want anything to take away from this beautiful pond, but I do think having a small dock for the fish to hang out up under and to come out and sit on adds a nice touch. So now that the cedar tree is set, we're adding some gravel in there to fill those void spaces and then setting more of the aqua blues to give it a good finishing touch. There's something opposite coming this way extending off of that log so we want to get something diving down through this area so high down to low so we get that water sweeping and it's been really fun working with ed on this project he's already got the vision in his head of exactly what he wants the pond to look like and we're just using these boulders and different wood pieces to make it happen and he needed one last big tree so we went on another tree hunt and found an oak that had been falling for quite some time. So it was a little bit tricky getting this one out of there <laughs> and even had some complications getting it out from behind the pond dam, but we got it done. All right, that's a wrap for today. Got the big tree set and some of the stonework in place right there. Also got some of the piping in place for the jets that are gonna come up throughout the bottom of the pond. Got the post set for the dock. You can see they're setting right there in the cement. We also got the intake bay over there pretty much completed. That is going to pipe up to the wetland filter on top of the hill. That's nearly complete as well. And then the waterfalls will come crashing down. You can see they started setting some stones and they're going to enter the pond right here in this area. But big shout out to the Aquascape crew. It is absolutely incredible what they can achieve in just a few days. So if you guys remember in the backyard pond, we had Clyde's Cove and that was a success. So we're imitating that several different ways here. We've got a big pocket right here, fish cave. Another one, smaller version of it, right here in this area. But there's gonna be dozens of places for fish to hide out. So this is gonna be the dock that comes out here and extends over the pond. So the fish will be able to swim back in through here. I'm sure a lot of them will hang out right there under the dock. But here's another really cool spot where a lot of the fish are gonna hang out up under that big oak log or oak limb right there and then they're going to put some plants back there behind the log to kind of grow up and make a really good backdrop but as you can see there's just going to be dozens of hideouts and places for fish to live and hang out in this pond but ed has explained the waterfall feature and i'm really excited for you guys to see it we have a lot of elevation drop right here in this area. Some really cool aqua blue flat pieces over there that Ed's gonna piece together and make a beautiful stream and waterfall where it comes crashing down right here into the pond and kind of have one of those unintended side effects. Kind of looks like an infinity pool or infinity pond as those water edges just blend together. And I think that's my cue to wrap it up. I think the deer are getting mad at me. They said enough pond building for a day. It's time for them to come out and eat. And I found the happiest person of all with this new pond build, and that's Sarah. We brought her out for the first time today, and she had to inspect all of our work and make sure all those fish caves were up to par. But she got the full tour, and now she's ready to be a pond builder. And Oliver's not really sure what's going on. <laughs> he said he's ready for some water. 
and is also an admirer of the Aqua Blue Stones. He's got good taste. But I think that's going to wrap up a good day of pond building, and we got a full moon coming out tonight, so you know i got to set up the night lapse. And this one turned out okay, but I can't wait to get some of those after that waterfall feature's built. Looking forward to it already. And since it's a full moon tonight, we're going to do one of my favorite things and feed the tiger bass. And while I'm doing that, it's time to announce our next giveaway or contest. So as you all know, I let you name everything, including our pet fish, our previous ponds, and even the cabin out here at the farm. So I want you guys to leave a comment down below on what you think we should name the new pond. And we named the five acre pond the Crimson Oak after the big 150 year old fallen oak tree. And that tree got knocked over during a hurricane right before we built that pond. But this new pond doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with that. So any name or idea is completely wide open and nothing is off the table. So come up with a creative name and as always the best name wins. And I'll probably leave the prize up to the winner. We'll either fly you in for a weekend trip out at the farm or a cash prize, whichever you prefer. And since the pond isn't completed yet, I'm probably going to keep this contest open for one more week. Because some of you may come up with a different idea once you see the final look of the pond. So you can leave your name suggestions in this video and the next. And then we'll select the winner in the following video. But I'm not sure if you could tell, but some of these bass are starting to get a little lethargic. So last week we had our first cold freeze come through, and the temps got down to just at freezing. And like most fish, the tiger bass don't really like that. Their metabolism is directly connected to the water temp, so as it gets colder, they move and oftentimes eat less. So you can see they've lost a little bit of aggression, but they still can't pass up an easy meal. <laughs> so this is actually funny because Ed was just asking me if we have any armadillos in the area and I told him they're pretty much regulars here at the farm and they thought that was unique because they don't have armadillos <laughs> up north or in the Chicago area where they're from. But you can see these guys' senses aren't kicking on all cylinders. I think this one's vision and hearing is pretty bad. Or either he just doesn't see me as a threat. But he's just hanging out here midday but not a care in the world. But we got some more good news. So if you guys recall, my buddy Nick built us this birdhouse and installed a live stream camera inside of it so that when a bird flew in and built a nest, we could get a live view of it. And we had the first visitor stop by today inspecting the new home to see if it was worthy of a nest. So stay tuned. I'll keep you guys posted if the nest building starts anytime soon. Now let's check in on the Bonnie's Bayou cam. It is always the hot spot for the wildlife. I keep thinking that as the temperatures drop, it's eventually going to get so cold that the deer don't walk through the water. But so far, that has not been the case. And the cooler weather has created a lot more deer activity. We're seeing big groups of them come through. And this area is only about 50 yards from the new pond build. You can see we even got some bucks fighting and claiming their turf. There's a good shot of the full moon coming up in the background. But I think the bucks are a little bit spooked with the new build because a lot of them are running through the pond. And that kind of looks like snow, but we don't get that here in South Alabama. It's just a foggy evening. And one of my favorite sights, the bass chasing the tilapia up in the shallow cove. Getting to see some of those topwater shots. All right, time to catch a few of these tiger bass, see how big they've gotten. If you're not familiar with it, every time we catch one, if it doesn't already have a pit tag in it, we'll inject a pit tag, and then we'll use this scanner to scan it, and it'll have a unique 12-digit code. And we'll log all the catches in a database and keep track of their growth. But if you look right past where the ducks are at down there, you'll notice all the algae and grass mats have died off. We had a cold front come through this past week. So a lot of these fish have probably pulled off the banks and gotten out a little bit deeper. So we're going to start off with something like a drop shot in about that six foot range of water and see if we can catch a few. There we go. Good one. Oh yeah. The hat. That's a nice one. Oh yes sir. That's gonna be close to the two pounder for sure right there. I think we got two pounds. 
All right, this fish has been caught. 570540. That one sounds familiar. 16 and a half inches. And this fish weighs 2.22 pounds. I'm pretty sure that's a record. 2.22 pounds. All right, I believe that's the biggest crimson oak bass we've ever caught right there. Nice one. And I knew I recognized this fish. It's named Yoshi. And this is already the fourth time we caught her. And she is indeed now the heaviest bass in the pond. And one interesting fact about her is those four locations we caught her were all on exact opposite sides of the pond. So Yoshi is an explorer and pretty much eats everything in sight. I just swapped over to an underspin. Got a little swim bait, three inch swim bait on the back. That's what got her to bite. That's a good healthy one too. I like to see that. Big bellies. This fish has not been caught. It's a little surprising. As big as it is. It is 15 and a half inches. And its tag is gonna be 570730. And this fish weighs 1.89 pounds. Almost a two pounder. Nice one. Look at the bass. He got it. Got him. <laughs> that was so cool. There's another one right there beside him. So I was reeling that in and I watched that bass come up to the surface right there. Well, he's a little skinny guy. And he weighs 1.34 pounds. Alright, I enjoyed that one, buddy. Here he is. Got it reeling it in again. Feels like a good one. Man, he's fighting. Nice one. That's a good one. Got a little red dot right there on him. They get aggressive when you start reeling it in. All right, this fish has been caught before, 69597, 69597. And this fish weighs 1.74 pounds. That's a good one. I'm releasing it right here at the Oak Throne. And this particular bass is named Nemo. The last time we caught Nemo was this past spring, and we've had some good growth, almost three quarters of a pound since then. Got it. <laughs> I just saw that fish bust in the bank. You can see the other ones in there hitting right beside it. They were chasing some bait up on the bank and I turned around and tossed it right in there. That was pretty fun. Another nice healthy one. Another fish without a tag. 16 inches. All right, this fish is gonna be 69942. 2.02, .02, another two pounder. It's kind of hard to believe we're catching these two pound fish for the first time, but that's just the way it goes. There we go. Right there by the well. Interested to see if it's pumping in hot water or cold water compared to what the water temp is here. Little male. All right, it's time for our weekly experiment with the deer. We're trying out a couple different products today. This one was one of the overall winners from last year, G&D Rack Attack. The Bucks absolutely love that stuff. And this is a new product I've never tried, Buck Stop Crumbles. So it's got a little protein mix in there. It's also got some apple flavored stuff as well as corn. So 
interested to see which one of these they're gonna like more. This is more powder mix. That's a mixture of protein pellets, apple corn. All right, rack attack there, apple crumbles there. We'll watch the camera tonight and see what they like. <laughs> and I thought we were gonna have to wait until nighttime, but we only had to wait about 10 minutes. I think the little fawn and mama heard me come by and knew it was feeding time. And they're out there in the middle of the day. And they also had a young buck show up shortly after. But if you look back off in the distance, there's at least eight or ten deer back there on the wood line. And they're just eating some of those winter crops that we planted last month. And so far it's been about a 50-50 split as far as which pile the deer prefer more. But as you can see throughout the night, the bucks start gravitating to that rack attack. There's something in it that the bucks like more than the does. Because you can see it brings a pile of them in. And the next morning, both piles are gone. So two really good products. And somehow this doe has not just one, but two of her ears flipped back. <laughs> and I wanted to set up another feeder cam in the feeder right beside the new pond. Because you get an up-close look. But I was a little surprised to see the old bandits coming in. Climbing up the side of the feeder to get them some fresh apple corn. And there's also something funny about watching deer eat corn. It's just not how I would have expected to see them grab it. And something spooked those two. And now it's time to feed Mr. Tiger. And one of the last questions I have for you guys is now that we're building this new pond, should we move Tiger into this new aquascape pond we're building? Or should we put him back in the five acre pond that we caught him out of? You'll be able to see him a lot more in this new pond because it's going to have clear water. And so you could watch feeding clips like this. Or I can release him back with all his brothers and sisters. So I'll leave that up to you. Let me know in a comment down below. But a huge shout out to Aquascape and the guys that have been working with me the past few days on this pond build. If there's any of you out there looking for a pond of any size, I've got the information to all of these guys in the video description down below. Reach out to the one closest in your area, and I can say without a doubt they will take great care of you. So the Aquascape regional event is coming up next week where a big group of contractors will come in and help us finish the last few days of this pond. It's going to be a great time, and I can't wait to show you all. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I hope you all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time.